By the time Ibera Horror of the Deep was released, it was becoming clear that the Godzilla franchise was starting to lose steam. Ishiro Honda, Ijai Tsuburaya, and Akira Ifugube were all working on other films, and as budgets continued to be slashed, and as the kaiju genre began appealing more to children, Godzilla was quickly losing his edge. So, in an effort to appeal to younger audiences, Toho did the unthinkable. They gave Godzilla a kid of his own, and thus the son of Godzilla was born, a creative choice that still proves controversial to this day. A small team of scientists, along with a nosy journalist, are stationed on the remote Sogol Island with the goal of perfecting a weather control device. Their efforts are complicated by the presence of a trio of massive praying mantises called Kamakaris, the giant spider Kumanga, and most notably, a newly hatched baby Godzilla-like creature whose cries for help draw Godzilla to the island, where he claims and begins raising the baby as his own. It's not long before these various forces clash as the scientists figure out a way to escape the island alive. Son of Godzilla is one of the most divisive films in the franchise, and frankly, it's easy to see why. More so than any other film up to this point, it is explicitly made to appeal to kids, with Minya the unofficial mascot of this transition. For many fans, he is the face of everything that had gone wrong with the franchise, misshapen and pudgy and too cute for his own good. He is, to put it bluntly, ridiculous looking. He doesn't look anything like Godzilla, making the instances where the characters confuse the two comically absurd. And yet, this doesn't take away from the overall enjoyability of the film. Despite the desperate nature of the premise, Son of Godzilla is an immensely fun and colorful film that never bores. The tropical island setting is better utilized here than was in the previous film, providing a logical backdrop to the weather control experiment that the human characters take part in, which is an intriguing premise that hooks you fairly quickly. The giant insects that populate the island also make for naturally threatening monsters that, in a rarity for the franchise, provide an immediate threat to the characters characters. The human characters are shallow, but are lively enough to keep you engaged in the story, and the cast is full of familiar faces. Akira Kubo makes his second appearance in the franchise as Goro, the reporter who drops in on the island unannounced, as does Tadao Takashima, who plays lead scientist Professor Kasumi. Akihiko Horata and Kenji Sahara also return, as does Yoshio Suchiya, who played the head exilian in Invasion of Astro Monster, here standing out for his portrayal of a man gone mad with heat stroke. And like in Ibera, there is a lone native girl, Psycho, played by Beverly Maeda, only this time she has much more agency, using her knowledge of the island to help the scientists. The stars of the show, though, are of course the monsters, and the one who stands out in ways both good and bad is Minya. While a terrible design, Minya is an endearing little fellow, whose antics provide the film's most entertaining moments. He has a childlike innocence that anyone who has been around kids can recognize. His scenes with Godzilla are very charming, and the father-son relationship that develops between them is well-performed amusing to watch, and yes, even heartwarming. <laughs> While not as flashy as some of the franchise's more popular monsters, Kumanga and Kamakuris make for some terrific antagonists. The puppeteering work on them is exceptional, especially for Kumanga, who is probably one of the more threatening villains of the franchise, particularly if you don't like spiders. And while the Kamakurai aren't quite so menacing, they make for good bully characters for Minya to go up against. Jun Fukuda returns in the director's seat, and like with Abera, he gives the film a colorful energy that makes it nonstop fun. There are some really great shot compositions, and the sound design does a wonderful job conveying the emotions of the monsters without dialogue, while Masaru Sato's score is both bouncy and suspenseful when appropriate, fitting the tone of the story perfectly. While it's easy to see why one could despise Son of Godzilla, there is no denying that it is one of the more delightful entries in the franchise. The story for both the humans and the monsters is very entertaining, and both play off of each other very well. The special effects are quite good despite the lower production values, and while Minya and Godzilla both suffer from some seriously questionable designs, their relationship is genuinely sweet, and ends on an image that is effective, poignant, and now after all these decades, iconic. Son of Godzilla may not be the classic Godzilla of old, but as a film for children, it excels, making this a perfect film to introduce to a little G-fan in the making. 
For more reviews and opinions on all things Godzilla, subscribe and stay tuned to Up From The Depths.